our first um, in the series of sessions to do with Fresh Start. So welcome to everybody who's now joining. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes um, just to get into the room um, and then we'll kick off. I've got a little presentation to share. And this is the first of the monthly coaching sessions that I'll be doing here each month um, to really kind of help you get through and navigate this time. Uh, we will be going on quite a journey, but everything is relevant um, as it's all to do with your mindset and how to get the most out of you. So regardless of where you are in your divorce journey, be at the very beginning, the middle, the end, or actually now trying to blend your family, all of this will be relevant to you. And actually all of the skills and the coaching that I'll be offering um, through these sessions uh, are stuff that you'll use for life so you know they are good for any point in your life where you're dealing with a stressful situation or whether you're just you know trying to reevaluate where you are and where you want to go and make that happen for you so all of this um, is going to be really helpful and the sessions that I'll be doing as exercises and things that I do with all of my one-to-one -one clients so uh, you're not getting a watered down version all of this is exactly how I work one-to-one and -one. Um, you'll be getting all the same tips advice guidance exercises materials questions um, to really help you um, at this time so um, yeah really excited I can see people are joining really great to have you here um, so I have got a little presentation to share all of the materials will be available afterwards and obviously this is available on replay so if for any reason you have to drop off or you can't make the sessions don't panic it's all going to be in the membership area so you can watch back as many times um, as you like um, and go over this um, so without further ado I'm just going to bring up my materials here also um, as I said I have got a presentation to share um, if we've got time, I will um, allow for questions at the end. So if you have got any questions, pop them in the chat. I'll be able to see them as we go through and then I can um, add them uh, in at the end of the, the session and I'll get to as many as I can. So this first session is really the basics on how to really understand how your mind works um, and therefore then how to get the best out of it, particularly at times of stress or when you're not feeling your best. And let's be honest, Regardless of your situation or what how this has come about, divorce is never something that's not going to be stressful. It's up there with, you know, death and moving house. So um, and if you're doing all three, then, you know, you're contending with all three, then you need this even more. Um, but as I said, this is just great for any time in your life where you really need um, to to really kind of reconnect with you and really look after you. Um, and ultimately, you know, you want to move forward, you want to have a happy life and move on from where you are now, and also create that life for your children. And the, all of these um, tools you can use with them to really help them navigate this time and, um, you know, and, and move you all forward as a family. So enough talking, I'm going to get into it. Um, so as I said, what I'm going to cover in this session is how your mind actually works from a sort of subconscious, conscious, psychological perspective, just the very basics of exactly what it is you your mind sees feels and therefore how it responds to things around you so understanding that is helpful not only from your perspective of understanding yourself but it also really helps you to understand others um and that's always beneficial for you know whether you're trying to deal with your ex or you're trying to deal with your children friends family or a new partner understanding how we're all kind of wired the same understanding that is hugely helpful and beneficial for all relationships going forward and then as I said how it works particularly in stressful situations uh, as I said which you will may well be going through right now or certainly will come up come up in the future um, and then how you can really take care, good care of it so you can make really good decisions because when we're stressed we don't make good decisions necessarily and that's what we really need to be doing at a time like this so that's what I'm going to kind of share with you today and in doing so, we'll actually start to build up a bit of a, me, uh, we'll actually start to build up a um, kind of a self-care plan, uh, which you can, which will kind of build up over the time and tailor to your needs. So um, this is kind of really setting in the basics of doing that. Right. So, so the first thing to understand about your mind is that you have, no matter how old you are, your brain is a 200 million year old brain. And by that, I mean, 
it hasn't changed the the setup of your your brain and how it works and how it perceives threats and how the conscious and subconscious mind works it hasn't moved on from being 200 million years old and even with all the evolution and everything that we've done we're still hardwired to protect ourselves to um to stay alive and that's fundamentally what your brain is there to do is to keep you alive it hates uncertainty of any description and you know that's why I think we struggle so much with change in any aspect of our life change is always kind of big and scary Um, and that's because one of our basic human needs is actually certainty is that security of knowing that we're safe um, and whatever safe means for you that we've got a, a roof over our heads we've got food in our bellies we can pay the mortgage you know that's what safe means today back in the day it was you know that you had a cave and you weren't going to be eaten by the saber-toothed tiger but it, you know, the, the circumstances have changed, but the fundamental need at the very root of everything, certainty hasn't changed. Um, and therefore, when your brain feels that your that your certainty and your security is being um, impacted and that's not available to you, it goes into one of three responses, fight, flight, or freeze. And that is survival mode, which um, can also be described as defense mode. And that kicks in, it's a subconscious primal need that we all have that we're either going to get um defensive and we're going to fight or we're going to run or we're going to freeze and that is the same for all animals and we are no different and we never have been and we never will be it's just something we've got to work with so um in a situation where like a divorce or a separation or you're being triggered by your ex or where you're getting news about an ex's new partner whatever it is you if you go into survival mode which happens completely unconsciously if you go into survival mode then you're going to get one of those reactions and that response comes from the fact that literally in your brain survival mode has kicked in and therefore the blood and oxygenated blood that usually is in your brain is now being pumped away from your brain and into your arms and legs ready to do one of those responses. So either, you know, you got to fight, you got to flight. So it's going to push all of your oxygenated blood elsewhere away from your brain, which is where you need it most. That does not allow for you to use the part of your brain that allows for rational, strategic thinking. At this point, you are on autopilot. It's a completely subconscious response. So the idea, the best way to to deal with that is to get yourself out of survival mode because in this mode we cannot function at our best um physically we just don't have the 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 blood or the oxygen to to do that so we need to move away from from survival mode now i've mentioned the conscious and the subconscious mind so another thing to bear in mind is that 95 percent of our thoughts our actions and our behavior therefore our habits comes from our subconscious mind Only 5% of what you do is conscious. You think 770,000 thoughts a day. Majority of those aren't even conscious. You're not even aware of them. So that's where that internal chatter, those looping thoughts, those habits, those beliefs, those patterns and things that you've inherited, um, stuff that's happened in your past that's really kind of keeping you where you are and keeping you in that uh, mindset and the perception of your situation. That all comes from your subconscious mind. And we were actually, majority of our subconscious mind was programmed between the ages of zero and eight. So majority of the way you work today and you how you feel and view things and think about things, a lot of that is coming from your childhood. That's obviously been, you know, worked on over the years. And actually, as adults, we walk around literally looking for proof that our belief system is true. So what that means is we can go into any situation And I can be in the same situation as you and I will perceive it very differently because I will perceive it through my own belief system that I developed as a child that I have then looked for evidence for the rest of my adult life to support. And you will look at that same event and see it very differently. There's a reason why police will ask for multiple witnesses at a crime scene because no one saw the same thing, because it depends on the attachment that you attach to sorry, the meaning that you attach to that particular situation. So someone says something to you and depending on what you've experienced, what your views are, what your values are, what your belief structure is, will depend how you take that information on and how you feel about that. And it will be very different how you respond to language. All of that programming is 
is something that's been worked on up until the, today. You've had that programming and you have re um, introduced that programming time and time and time again because you've looked for the evidence to support it. Guess what? So is your ex. So is your new partner if you're in a new relationship. And so are your children. So all the programming that you've had over the years, your ex has had their own programming. Your new relationship has had their own programming. And your children are currently being programmed. And they're being programmed primarily by you and the other parent. So majority of our beliefs, a lot of that comes from our parents. They're also from you know other people that we have in our environment. So it could be other siblings or relatives or school. All of that program is going in. So however you're carrying on and, and carrying out your divorce at the moment or your separation is all having an impact on your children. And how you're viewing your separation is being impacted by your own belief system. It's really important to know that because that's why this understanding that is so crucial. And also being able to relate to others is in understanding the fact that they have their own programming that's going on and it might not be good and it might not be healthy. Some people have great programming, but it's not all perfect. There's always room for improvement. And that's what a lot of this work that I'm going to do with you is, is going to cover is how you how you change that belief system and how you set up your mind in order to be able to do that so that you can really move forward and not be hampered by what's happened in the past and let go of some of that. But we'll come on to that. We'll take baby steps today. So as I said, how the conditioning works is you have an event that happens in your life and that leaves a remnant in your mind. It creates a neuro-linguistic pathway in your mind that when you're reminded by that memory, which we can be reminded through our senses. So, you know, when you hear a particular song, or you smell a particular thing, or you taste something, you're taken back to that memory of of where you were and what you were doing at the time. It's why breakups and hearing songs on the radio is so painful because it reminds you of something that's a memory, it's a neuro-linguistic um, pathway that's been created in your mind. Every time you remember that event, that pathway gets stronger. So if you look at these scales, every time you remember that event, it's like you take another stone and you put it on the side of the scales of that event and it reminds and it just um, strengthens that memory. It strengthens that memory, it then strengthens that belief that you have or that perception of that memory. And the more that you get wedded to that course of that turn of events, that, that's how it happened, that's how it felt. You also um, attribute language and meaning and feeling to that memory. Every time you recall that, it's going to just condition it a bit more. It's going to just um, solidify that in your mind. And it's going to be really easy to bring that up. The slightest thing, that, that song on the radio, is going to put you right back there every single time. What coaching does, and um, particularly, you know, linguistic programming and coaching, which is what I do, is it's, we don't really look at trying to rewrite what happened, because what happened has happened. We can't do anything about what's happened in the past. What the work I do is, is about taking what's happened and then deciding what you want for your future, and then overriding the pro the existing program that's running with one that's much more conducive to what you actually want so it's one that actually enables you to leave the baggage behind that enables you to move on and to not get triggered by your ex to have a healthy co-parenting relationship to not be affected or impacted by them to create a really healthy um nurturing environment for your children to move on and meet someone new to find the confidence in yourself to to rediscover what it is you want to do with your life and where you want to spend your time and who you want to spend your time with um and that's what the coaching I do um is all about it's all about that reprogramming and moving forward and looking at what you want next as opposed to going over what's happened in the past so a lot of therapy is looking at what's previously happened before and keep going over that um, coaching would say that's the wrong way to to go about it because actually all you're doing is solidifying you know this end of the scales and remembering remembering and remembering that event is just conditioning yourself more and more and more into that program that's not serving you so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite the program that's what we're going to do over the next um, 12 months we're going to completely rewrite that program 
to something that's much more healthy and gets you to where you want to be as opposed to where you are now and living in the past. Because the, the times where in order to move forward, you've got to be thinking about your future and what you want and becoming that person, not living as the past. And that's not going to serve you in the future. So in order to, to, to do that, we have to let go of the, 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 the stories that we're telling ourselves, right? The, the history, we have to let go of that. Because when we get into that pattern of remembering, and then we would, might get really angry or anxious or frustrated or upset, and we feel all that pain um, from, you know, the event that's occurred, and we kind of, we get a spike in our adrenaline, which feeds our body and sometimes we can actually get addicted to the chemicals that our brain's releasing so you know adrenaline is one of many um you know chemicals that our, our mind releases into our body and we can actually kind of get, get hooked on that like it's a drug so we release the adrenaline we know we can get angry we see our ex we flare up we get angry and then we're there for a while but we can't sustain it so then what happens is we kind of come down this loop in and we have this slump and you're physically exhausted because physically and mentally you can't sustain that adrenaline for a long period of time. You know, adrenaline is what's needed for that survival mode of running or fighting. So then you come down to the depression piece and then, you know, you start to really question yourself. You start to feel victimized around the situations happen, feeling trapped in the situation that's going on. You can't do anything about it. After a while, you, your body will create, your mind will create, uh, or your um, an event or you will come back into contact with your ex or whatever it is so they'll send you some more divorce papers you get an, e an angry email whatever it is that then triggers you back into that adrenaline spike and that is, is the kind of the variety which is another basic human need we need um it's a variety in our, our, in our change in our body and our mental state and it flicks you back to the the anger and the um, anxiety that gives you a, an emotional and a chemical change in your body that's been created from your brain that then flips you back so then you're up here again and you're in the adrenaline and then guess what it's not sustainable and you end up in this crazy loop that just keeps going round and round and round they call it the crazy eight and it's called the crazy eight because it's literally an eight on its side you're not getting off that loop unless you do the work that we're going to do that's going to get you to looking at the beliefs and the values and the needs that you're trying to meet and how you're meeting them and how it's really not in a healthy way and making those small adjustments and changes. And the first step in doing that is making sure that you can take care of your understanding how your brain works and taking care of it so you can make better decisions and be more rational. So we're going to get off, off that, that crazy loop. So a couple of things on how the mind actually works. So your mind works in pictures. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't um, sorry, speak English. It doesn't really have a language necessarily. Your mind speaks in feelings. It doesn't speak in language. But the feelings are triggered by language. So as I said earlier, there are certain things that you could say to me that I would find triggering or may take more offense to than may, perhaps you would and vice versa because we will attach meaning to language. So it has to be language that works for you. And you'll notice that from your internal chatter. But in the sense of what your mind recognizes, it recognizes feelings and it recognizes pictures. So visualize, that's why visualization is so key and why so many coaches use visualization, particularly with sort of sports and athletes and people like that. But they visualize the game before and they get into the zone. They know exactly how they're going to hit that ball or, or do that pass. That's because the mind works, our mind works with pictures. It resists anything unfamiliar. As I mentioned before, it doesn't like uncertainty. It also doesn't like unfamiliar. It doesn't like change. It likes routine. It likes to know what it's doing. Um, and that's um, how it likes to, to work. So from what's familiar, it likes routine, which is why we're going to build a self-care routine that's going to really help you at this time. It doesn't like things to be uncertain. It doesn't like things to be up in the air. And that's why, you know, when you're going through a divorce and separation, as you guys are going through, not having that same routine and having, you know, so many changes going on at once is so unsettling. And it's why it's such a stressful time. Um, it's because your your mind, your brain just does not like it. It fights against it. It also has a tendency to do what it thinks we want based on past experiences instead of that conditioning that we've already had. It does what it thinks we want, not what, unless we tell it something different. 
which is part of this as well. We're going to tell it what we want as opposed to letting it think for itself. And it forms beliefs, as I've mentioned, based on the meanings that we attach to things. So like I said, depending on how you feel about a particular language or um, a particular event, you will attach different meanings. So you will look at a situation, perhaps with a conversation with someone, and you will make assumptions about what their intentions are, about what they're trying to to do about how that's going to make how that makes you feel and that's all based on what your belief structure says but also the meanings that you're attaching to things and the other thing to know with your mind is that everything everything starts with a thought our thoughts become our feelings our feelings dictate our actions and our actions dictate our outcomes so whatever we're thinking that's in our conscious mind. So that's the 5%. Our subconscious mind talks in feelings. It doesn't talk in language. It's feelings that it listens to. It creates feelings. We then act upon those feelings. So if you're feeling guilty, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, happy, excited, whatever it is, we act upon feelings. Those feelings dictate what our actions are going to be. They then create the outcomes. We are more in control. The point of this is we are more in control. You are more in control of your situation than you currently believe. Because whatever you're thinking creates your feelings, which will dictate your actions, will dictate your outcomes. You, are, you have so much more power today than you realize. And that's what I'm going to show you over the next you know, few months is how to take back that power and realize what you are in control of and how you can make it work for you at a time when it feels like you've got no, that you're powerless or that you're at the mercy of other people who, you know, perhaps you're not getting on with at the moment. Most of us don't get on with our ex. That power, that um, ability to control your outcomes, that's what I'm going to teach you. So what that looks like, and you'll probably hear me refer to this as looping thoughts, that internal chatter that you have, the thoughts that are going through your head, that I said they kind of control the feelings, actions, outcomes. So in practice, what that looks like is um, if you're thinking this is never going to end, I'm stuck, I'm climbing the walls, um, you know, my house in, is in jeopardy, my livelihood is in jeopardy, I'm struggling. All of those thoughts, they're going to create feelings of anxiety, fear, loneliness, panic, perhaps feeling trapped, feeling like the victim. Um that could, you know, lead to actions such as you might drink, you might come for eat, you might be aggressive, you might decide to go on a massive shopping spree. However, you know, actions often tend to be symptoms of what we're feeling, which is being driven by a thought or a belief at a subconscious level. But outcomes of which are potentially health issues, relationship issues, um, you know, court battles, finances going through the roof, sickness, all of this acts then as evidence to the original thought of this is never going to end I'm stuck my health is in jeopardy you know all of those things that you're that you were thinking originally it's just creating more evidence to support that as I said we look for evidence and proof that our belief system is correct this is what that's offering so actually if you can if you can change your thoughts to this will pass it's just a moment in time that I've just got to get through um, I've got an opportunity here to reevaluate what I want in my life to let go of you know if what for whatever the cause of the separation was you know it's ultimately going to be for the best I want to be with someone who I want to be with who wants to be with me I'm going to find that person in the future but I'm going to right now really take care of myself my kids I'm going to, you know, make the most of this time. This is not going to destroy me. This is only going to make me stronger. Even on the days when I'm really struggling, this is what I need. You know, this is what's best for me. Feelings of optimism, of trust, of self-compassion, of self-love, you know, of resilience even, strength, those feelings of, of surrender even to, to the fact of just acceptance, those feelings will create actions of self-care, self-investment. The fact that you're here shows that you've invested in yourself and that you want to get the right support to really help you at this time, that you want to move forward, that you don't want to feel like this anymore. So you've already self-invested. Um, you're already looking for healthier um, habits and ways of reflecting so you can move forward. And that creates endless possibilities to improve health, clarity, a new you, new relationships, 
Um, you know, you can redesign your life as much as this is scary. And this is a moment when, you know, you perhaps didn't want this or didn't ask for this. Actually, it's a time to go back to the drawing board and go, what do I want? And actually, do you know what? Through my support network and through Fresh Start support network, I'm going to make this happen. And I know I've got people in my corner and I know that people get divorced all the time and they come out better for it. And that's what I'm going to do. Or maybe I don't know people who've done it, but do you know what? I'm going to be the first one I know that's done it. You can have an alternative. You can have a different way of looking at this. Um, and that's what I'm also going to help you with. So as I've mentioned before, our subconscious mind is, you know, it works with emotion. It works with feeling. And the way that you control your thoughts around that kind of creating the emotional state that you want to be in is where focus goes, energy flows. So where you're putting your focus is where you're putting your energy. If you're putting your focus right now into hating your ex or feeling resentful or feeling hard done by or remembering the past or sitting in your wedding dress or cutting up photos, you're putting your energy into that as opposed to putting your energy into you, putting your energy where it's needed to heal, to move forward, to accept, to to build yourself back up, to come out stronger. And you're not and you're or putting your energy also into supporting your children so that they can have a really healthy experience in this and they can move on because remember whatever you're doing right now is shaping them and their relationships to the future whatever you've whatever you're creating right now is creating them it's creating their belief system honestly if we knew all of this i don't think any of us would have children it's scary you have such an impact more than you could ever know on the adults and the people that they're going to grow up to be and the relationships they're going to have and how they're going to go into their own relationship, their own marriage and have their, and, and treat their own children. You are shaping that right now. It's scary, but when you know that, you can do something about it. So you can focus where you really want to focus and you can, you know, put your energy into you. You deserve to look after you so that you can also look after them and they will then be able to look after themselves. Language. I mentioned language already a couple of times. What we hear from others and what we say to others. So think, so notice the next um, month, a little test for you. Start to notice the language you use. I, I used to notice this one. It's something that um, my family does when, uh, and I noticed it mostly when I spoke to one of my sisters and they'd say, oh, how are you? And I go, not too bad not too bad would suggest that I'm not good that it, that bad is is the norm and then I'm a bit better than bad that's not where I want to be and I consciously notice that language so now it's I'm good I'm great I'm feeling this and you know this has just happened it's not I'm not too bad because already I'm in a negative and my and my sister and I have that of I think or did have that of kind of being able to bring each other down and we didn't mean to and it was language that was being used so I want you to make notes for the next month make a note of the language you are using what you're saying to yourself as in internal chatter and what you're saying to others pick up on the language is it positive is it negative is it mediocre could it be could it be better could it be improved also have a look at where are you putting your focus? Where are you putting your time and your energy? And when you notice that you're focusing on something that's really not what you want or really not helping you, interrupt it, stop it. How we stop looping thoughts, we we interrupt the pattern. So when you're having a looping thought, you interrupt it and you say, do I want to feel like this? Do I want to think this? And if the answer is no, change it. What's the, alt what's the complete polar opposite of that thought? Or what can you focus on that will distract you from that, that will get you out of that loop? Start to notice your looping thoughts, your language and where you're putting your focus. You'll be amazed if you just start to notice. And then noticing is the first step in being able to then change it because you have to notice it in order to be able to put the intervention in there to change it. And then physiology. So I've already mentioned that, um, you know, your your the, what you're thinking creates your feelings, creates your actions, creates your outcome, but it also, the, the neuro-linguistic programming that you've got up here, those chemicals that you're releasing into your body, every thought has a physical representation in the body. You'll notice when you start, when you see, when you're in a stressful situation, perhaps you see your ex or see your ex's new partner or you see a letter come through from the solicitors, whatever it is, whatever the trigger is, you'll notice 
you'll f- have a physical response to that, a physical reaction to that. Start to pick up on that as well. Notice it. Notice what's triggering you and how it's triggering you in your body. Best, simplest um, way to deal with that, breathe through it. We've actually stopped breathing a lot of the time when we're stressed. So your mind does what it thinks you want. Your job is to tell it what you want. Most of us don't. Most of us just go on autopilot, getting frustrated, getting pissed off, getting annoyed with other people and external events and what's happening to us rather than thinking for ourselves and changing what's happening around us. And we do have the power to do that. I'm going to show you that. So I'm then going to just, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to share with you some kind of basic tips for just looking after your physical and your mental self-care, just some basics just to keep you, get you started in kind of creating a self-care routine and, and sort of enabling your mind to think at its best. To label that, getting out of survival mode, stopping those looping thoughts and those triggers and really kind of focusing and allowing you to think rationally to that will help you to calm your mind so that you can get the most out of it right now because that's what you need to do you're being asked to make some really big decisions right now no matter what stage you're at and you need to be thinking at your best and you need to be thinking long term for your future and your children's future and in order to do that you need to have a self-care routine and a self-care plan that enables that so uh, a couple of things on the physical self-care as I said the two are very linked daily exercise even if it's just getting out and going for a walk it doesn't have to be that you're going to sign up to do a marathon next next summer or you know you're going to take on some crazy routine or get abs that's not what this is about it's just daily exercise whatever that is for you it improves your brain power it floods your mind with oxygenated blood that makes you feel good it boosts your immune system which is great um because that can take a bit of a hit and we can feel run down when we're stressed so you know, making sure that you're in top, tip top physical, mental condition, daily exercise. I said walk, run, jog, swim, yoga, whatever it is, whatever it is that gets your body moving. Seven to eight hours sleep. Now, I know that when you're stressed and things are keeping you up at night, sleep is probably really hard. I have a whole article in the members area specifically about how to create a really good sleep routine. So um, you can go and have a look at that and that will really help you kind of get into calming your mind before bed and having a really good night's sleep. But sleep does recharge your brain, improves your blood flow and allows you to do strategic thinking. So it puts blood back to the strategic part of your brain. None of us work well when we're sleep deprived. None of us. We've all had kids here. We know what that's like. It's not fun. So try to sleep as much as possible and said if you need some tips on that there is a great article um, in the members area which will take you through uh, creating that routine stay hydrated sounds obvious drink water cell regeneration happens improved circulation it balances our mood and our emotions it literally just chills us out drink lots of water stay healthy and then breathe as i mentioned earlier it it's so crucial when we get stressed quite often we don't realize we actually stopped breathing it floods our brains with oxygen and allows you to think clearly you know you've probably done it yourself when you're dealing with something and you just go even that just releases the tension enable you know there's there's so many apps as well out there that can help you with this in just regulating your breath um a really good um tip is if you breathe in for four through your nose and out slowly for eight. That's a really great tip. Do it four times. Any situation, it will help calm you down because it it just slows your um your heart rate and and just enables you to as I said again get that oxygenated blood right back to your brain when you need it most. Take a minute, just breathe. Four lots of those breaths is forty five seconds. It's a minute of breathing, but it'll make a massive difference. Now, the mental side of self-care is is a bit more um, interesting. So again, 
it's kind of looking at your environment and what's around you and what you can do to really kind of support your your own self-care at the moment. One thing is to guard your brain. So our brains are like sponges. They literally take in information, 70,000 thoughts a day, 95% of us, our thoughts aren't conscious. You are taking in information constantly without even realizing it or noticing it. So be careful about how you're spending your time, who you're spending your time with, where you're putting your focus. Set some boundaries from people, the media, technology, just choose very carefully what you let in. This is your best asset. You need to protect it. You need to look after it, especially at a time like this. So guard your brain, be your brain's um, gatekeeper. People around you may have really great intentions right now, but they might not necessarily be helping with the situation. They may be putting fuel on the fire. You may be starting to notice if you do the work that I've asked around kind of noticing your triggers and your looping thoughts, start to notice patterns of where you get triggered. Is that coming from a person? Is it coming from what you're looking at on me, social media or um, what's in you know other media? Or is it from technology? Are you sitting on your phone at night, you know, stalking your ex's Instagram if, or, or seeing these perfect lives that everybody else is living that you're not feeling right now? Whatever it is, create those boundaries, set yourself up to really just look after your brain at the moment and at this stage until you're a bit stronger to deal with some of the other stuff and then you can release the boundaries but for now just just really look after what you're letting in I've said it so many times in our language speak kindly to yourself your mind is always listening you might not be aware of it but it is as well as daily exercise daily meditation is just as equally important to allow yourself to calm reconnect and reset. There are so many great YouTube videos. There's apps like Headspace, Mindfulness, allowing you to just breathe and take time. Over the course of the next few months, I'm going to um, share with you some visualization tools and other resources that will really help, um, particularly for focusing on the future. In fact, we're going to cover that next time. But for now, just having time in your day where you really take time for you and just calm your mind will be really, really helpful. Focus. So spending time, as we mentioned on the, the previous slide, focusing on what you want rather than what you don't want. Uh, for where focus goes, energy flows, remember. Um, that's going to be hardwired into, <laughs> into you by the end of this. Where focus goes, energy flows. So, you know, really think about where you're putting your focus and where you want to spend your time and your energy. And then gratitude. It sounds probably a bit um, try trust at the moment, but ultimately whatever it is you're going through you will get through this and there will be someone out there who would swap places with you in a heartbeat but you wouldn't want what they've got no matter how awful this feels right now there is always someone worse and there are always things to be grateful for in your life and whether that is the people who are rallying around you to try and support you whether it's your children um whether it's you know the work that you do or the job that you have or this you know membership program friends family the roof over your head the food in your belly whatever it is just take time each day to really focus on that it puts you in a high vibration it changes your mood it changes your opinion and your outlook and therefore your outcomes because it changes your mindset a daily practice of gratitude is so worthwhile I can't begin to tell you um and it really does set you up for the day. So if you can do that in the morning, even better. And then setting yourself up for, for success. So creating a self-care routine that in, incorporates all the things I've just mentioned. So exercise, water, sleep, um, meditation, you know, having clear boundaries and, you know, doing your gratitude, focusing on what you want, creating a self-care routine around that. And again, there is on um, the in the membership area, there is my specific daily routine that I do every day that incorporates all of these things so you can you can use mine tailor it to to what you want every successful person regardless of going through a divorce every successful person every entrepreneur every um person that you can read an autobiography for will tell you that they have a routine that they follow every day they did not get successful by accident trust me they have a routine that they follow they take care of their mind they take care of their body and they set themselves up each day and they don't leave their day to be to chance. They know this stuff and they are in control of their, their mindset and therefore their outcomes. That's why they're successful. No one did it by accident. 
this is what you're going to do too. Remove any potential blockers. So if you, for example, um, you know, you want to get up and do exercise first thing in the morning, but you know what, you really struggle to, you know, to get that motivation to leave the house, get the stuff out the night before, have everything set up, you know, drink your glass of water as soon as you get up in the morning. Great tip, you know, start um, being um, hydrated right from the moment you get up. You've, you've just spent the last seven, eight hours without drinking. So drink a glass of water, have it there. Down that, have your, your gym stuff ready to go. Have your diary out ready to do your journaling, whatever it is that's remove those obstacles from getting up and doing what it is you need to do. Also, do the things you don't want to do first. Don't put it off to later in the day. If you've got to respond to something from your ex or a solicitor or um, deal with something that you just really keep putting off, do it first. And then you have this sense of achievement, accomplishment is done, it's gone, and then you can get on with the rest of your day and not letting it sit there in the back of your mind niggling those those looping thoughts self-invest learn read explore treat yourself you deserve it this is a difficult time create a treat list and start ticking stuff off spoil you look after you focus on your future and what you want don't focus on the past it's so much easier said than done this is a journey you're not gonna you're still gonna get triggered by the past for now but keep focusing on what you want for your future and be kind to yourself. This isn't easy. Um, this is gonna. This is gonna be a marathon, not a sprint. Um, I'm here for you. The rest of my team's here for you. The rest of this community is here for you. Your friends, your family. You've got people around you. You need to be here for you too. You need to take your self care, your mindset, and your future really seriously, and make that a priority because that's what's going to get you through this to being coming out the other side successful and happy and moving on with someone new. 10% of what happens in life happens to me. 90% is how we choose to react to it. Remember that you have totally, totally got this and I've got this for you. So I've been here many, many times with clients and gone through my own divorce. I know what I'm talking about. I'm here for you. You will get through this. You will step by step get to the point of being more and more and more in control of what's going on of you and your life and your future. Your job is to take care of your mind and tell it what it wants, what you want, sorry. It's to guard your brain from all those other things that are going to bring you down and stop that from happening, to create your own self-care routine that allows you to really self-invest, learn, read, explore. Be kind to yourself in the process, and I promise you, you will come out stronger, more resilient, more creative, more successful than you can ever imagine at this very moment. I promise you um so I hope that has been helpful I can see some lovely comments that have been coming through thank you very much um guys I will be back on here in a month's time to take you through the next steps and um, this presentation is available to you this playback is available to you so you can go back and read you know take notes you know do the work look at your looping thoughts look at where you're putting your focus look at your language and start to build that self-care routine. So my routine's on the here. You can use mine. You know, look at how you get a good night's sleep. There's loads of resources available to you to really just start to kickstart that, to really start to work through breaking down that old program and replacing it with something that's much more conducive to where you want to be and who you want to be and who you want to be with. Um, and in the process, being an amazing role model for your kids. Um, you deserve it and so do they. So um, thank you so much for everyone who's joined. And um, we, as I said, we'll be back here in a month's time. And uh, there's a Q&A in between as well. So if any of this is unclear or you've got any questions, ping me um, and I will put them on the Q&A and answer those for you. Um, thank you so much. And I will speak to you guys very soon. <laughs>